Today's video is for those of you who are Illustrator users and may be looking to kick your Adobe addiction. Affinity Designer is a great app for that, but there are some pretty significant differences that you'll have to get used to if you do plan to make this switch. And the point of this video is to make that transition as easy as possible for you. Before we get started though, be sure to join my mailing list to get over 200 free design templates, including logos, avatars, infographics, and so much more. And as a member, you'll get even more of the free templates that I send out each month. I'll have that linked below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Let's start things off by going over some basic controls. In Adobe Illustrator, you can select objects either by clicking on them or by clicking and dragging a selection going through them. Affinity Designer is a little different though. If you want to use selections to grab your object, you have to create the selection going over the entire object. A partial selection will not grab the object. So if you want to change that functionality so that it's more like Illustrator, just come up here into your settings menu, click on the tools tab, and then enable this option right here that says select object with selection marquee, and then press the close button. And now you can create partial selections to select objects like you can in Illustrator. Another difference is when it comes to creating duplicate copies of an object. So if I take this object in Illustrator and I scale this down, I can create duplicate copies of this object by holding either the Alt or the Option key and clicking and dragging to create a copy. And I can repeat that process by pressing Command D repeatedly to create as many copies as I'd like. In Affinity Designer, it's slightly different. You can do the same thing. You can scale your object down like this, and you can use your Alt or Option key to create duplicate copies, but the keyboard shortcut is different. Instead of using Command D, you're gonna use Command J instead, and then you'll get the same functionality. Another difference between Affinity Designer and Illustrator is Trim View. So in Illustrator, there's something called Trim View, which allows you to preview what your artwork looks like with everything outside of the canvas trimmed off. So in my example here, I have this rectangle in the center of the page. This represents the boundary of the page or the canvas, and everything outside of it is going to be excluded from the design once I export this design. If you want to see a preview of how this looks, you could just come up here to where it says View and select Trim View, and it'll show you a preview of that. Affinity Designer has something similar, only it functions a lot easier. If you notice here, I designed the thumbnail for this video in Affinity Designer, and you can see everything that's sticking outside of the canvas. Now, if I wanna see what my thumbnail looks like without everything else here, I could just press the vertical bar key to toggle the visibility of that off and on like that. So this is a lot easier in Affinity Designer. You don't have to use the menu system to access this. So that's something handy to keep in mind. It's a feature that I really like and I use all the time personally. One of the biggest challenges people run into when using Affinity Designer is when it comes to importing documents, specifically vector documents like .ai files or .svg files. Now, for the most part, Affinity Designer will open your Illustrator files without a problem. But if you're trying to import them onto an already working document, you're going to run into a problem because Affinity Designer imports them as embedded documents, which creates a minor annoyance. So let me show you what that annoyance is and how to fix it. So let's say I want to import an Illustrator file into my working document here. I'm going to come up here to File, and I'm going to select Place, and I'm going to look for my file that I'm looking for. I'm going to select arrows.ai, and I'm going to place my document there. So there is the document that I imported. Now the problem is that Affinity Designer, by default, it imports this as an embedded document, which means I can't edit this at all. If I try to ungroup it, or I try to change the color or do anything else, I can't do it. Nothing will change with this document. I could zoom in to show you that it's still indeed a vector file, but the problem is that I can't edit it because it's embedded. And you can see that over here in the Layers menu. It'll be indicated by this little slash icon. So if you see this slash icon and you want to work with this file, what you can do is double click the thumbnail and then it'll open in a new tab. And what you could do now is once it's open in this new tab, you can select everything on here. Let me try that again. Select everything on here, press command C to copy it, and then come back into here, come back into your working document and you could press command V to paste everything in. And now you will have everything available in an editable format. So I can scale this down and I can change the colors of this if I want to and work with it as needed. And this embedded document over here, I could just press delete to get rid of that. I don't know why Affinity Designer works this way. If you find this to be annoying, that makes two of us. I'm sure they have their reasons, but this is how it works and that's how you can get around it. 
One of the biggest differences between Illustrator and Affinity Designer is how layers function. Now in Illustrator, layers are a way of organizing your work and dictating their stacking order in different categories. And that's mostly true in Affinity Designer, but the layers menu functions differently. In Affinity Designer, every object that you create is automatically placed onto its own layer. So if I come over here into a blank document and I create a rectangle, you can see that rectangle is placed on its own layer. Now, if I create an ellipse, you can see that that ellipse is also placed on its own layer. And this is true for every single object that you create. Everything gets its own layer. And if you want to group things together by layers, you'll have to just group them together. So if I were to select both of these objects, I can come up here to layer and select group. And now they will be grouped together in their own layer. And you can work within this group by expanding the layer. And now you can access these individually. And you could see an example of that over here in my thumbnail design. You could see I have all of these different objects in here and it looks kind of chaotic. You notice I have the, the label over here with the logos on it. I put this together in a group, but the convenient thing about this is that I can keep these grouped together and still work on them. This sort of doubles as like an isolation mode. If I were to expand this layer, I can work on these individual objects. I can change the text, I can change colors or some of the effects or adjustments applied. And then I could just collapse everything when I'm done and maintain the group. So that's one thing you'll have to get used to in Affinity Designer is that layers function a lot differently. Now let's have a look at how clipping masks work. In Adobe Illustrator, if I want to make a clipping mask out of this image and this circle, I could just place the circle over the image, select both objects, and then right click them and go to make clipping mask. In Affinity Designer though, this functions differently. So if I come into Designer, and I place my circle over the image. To create a clipping mask here, I'm gonna come over to the layers menu and I'm going to select the image layer and I will click and drag it on top of the circle layer. Now you'll wanna make sure that you're placing it over the name of the layer or the label and not the thumbnail because if you place it over the thumbnail, you're gonna get a different result. So place it over the label and then release the click and now you have a clipping mask that functions as its own object or you can edit these elements independently. So if I collapse this menu item over here, you can see it functions as a single object, but let's say I want to adjust the size and the position of the image within the clip. I can just expand this layer and now I can select these two objects independently and edit them in real time without having to release the clip. And this is really handy. And another good thing about this is that it's non-destructive. So when I'm ready to release the clipping mask, what I can do is select the image layer and then just pop it out of the group like that and now we are back to where we started. This is a refreshing change of pace from Illustrator because in Illustrator, if I wanna release this clipping mask, I have to right click it and go to release clipping mask. But when I do that, you lose the fill and stroke data of the original object. So the object that's, that was here is now an invisible object that lost its fill and stroke data. So I'll have to go and add that gray color back in manually. So one of the downsides of using Affinity Designer is that it doesn't have as many warp transformations as Illustrator does. These are otherwise known as envelope distortions, and they allow you to make all kinds of advanced transformations like fitting objects in the shape of a circle or making them look like a waving flag and so on and so forth. Affinity Designer does have some of these transformations, but they're rather limited. Let's have a look. So if I were to select my text object, I can come over here to the layers menu and I can click on this icon down here that says warp when you hover your cursor on it. And you can see we have a list of all the different types of transformations we can make. I'll start with mesh. You can see what mesh does. It gives you these different coordinate points that you can use to warp your object. And if you come up here to the tool settings menu, you can switch between these transformations. So I'll choose quad now and you can see what quad does. It allows you to change the corners and the edges of the object. I'll try perspective. Perspective allows you to change the perspective of the object. We also have arc vertical, arc horizontal, bend vertical, bend horizontal, fisheye, and twist. Now, although these transformations aren't as robust as illustrators, they can be combined together to simulate some of the more advanced distortions in Illustrator. A good example of this would be from a previous tutorial where I demonstrated how to make text fit the shape of a circle by combining the fisheye and the quad transformations. Let's have a look at a minor difference between how these two applications handle live corner widgets. So in Illustrator, there's something called live corner widgets that allow you to round the corners of an object. So if I were to select this object right here and zoom in on it, 
I can grab the direct selection tool and you'll notice we have these round knots that show up in the corners. Now I can click on one of those knots and click and drag it to round the corner of that object just like that. Now in Affinity Designer, this functions in a different way. There's actually a dedicated tool for this. So if I were to select this object and zoom in on the corner, I'm gonna come over here to my tools menu and grab this tool known as the corner tool. And this functions just like a live corner widget. I can click on this node right here and I can round that corner like that. But if you come up here to the tool settings menu, you see we have all of these different options. I can keep this rounded. I can change this into a straight corner. I can change it into a concave corner or I can change it into a cutout corner like that. And if at any point I want to change it back to how it was previously, I can just select this option right here that says none. Now let's address some of the features you'll be missing out on if you switch over to Affinity Designer, because as great as this application is, it's not a perfect replacement for Adobe Illustrator. So the first thing you'll be missing out on is vector brushes. Affinity Designer does have a brush tool, which is located over here. And you can come over here to the brushes tab and see we have all of these different brushes to choose from. And you can even increase and decrease the size of your brush using the bracket keys, just like you can in Illustrator. But if I click and drag to create a brush stroke, you can see it takes the brush stroke and puts it along a vector path that you can edit, but the brush stroke itself is not a vector. If you zoom in, you can see it is just a pixel based image. So that's one downside of working with Affinity Designer. You'll have to say goodbye to vector brushes, unfortunately. Another downside is image tracing. Illustrator has an image tracing feature, which allows you to generate vector tracings of pixel based images. Unfortunately, Affinity Designer has no such tool, but there is a workaround. You could always use Inkscape to do this. Inkscape is a free and open source vector application that works great as a supplement to Affinity Designer. So if you really need a vector tracing of an image, you could always generate it in Inkscape. And the cool thing about doing it that way is that you don't even have to save or export the file. You can just copy it in Inkscape and then paste it into Affinity Designer, and it will paste as a readily usable vector. Affinity Designer is also lacking a blend tool, which allows you to generate multiple copies of an object along a path in such a way that it combines shapes and colors to create smooth transitions and complex effects. This is another area where Inkscape comes in handy. Although Inkscape doesn't have a proper blend tool, there are several features that, when used in combination, can simulate the effect. I made a tutorial demonstrating this on my other channel. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. And finally, there are gradient meshes. Unfortunately, there are no gradient meshes in Affinity Designer, but once again, Inkscape is here to save the day as it does have a mesh gradient tool that is every bit as good as Illustrator's. In fact, Inkscape and Affinity Designer complement each other's shortcomings really well. If you combine the two apps together, you will have the perfect replacement for Adobe Illustrator. Now let's have a look at some of the features in Affinity Designer that Illustrator doesn't have, starting with adjustment layers. Now, if you're a Photoshop user, you probably already know what adjustment layers are. In Affinity Designer, you can access them in the layers menu. So if you come down here and hover your cursor over this icon, you can see it says adjustments. And if you click on that, you see all of these common adjustments that you would normally make to pixel-based images in an application like Photoshop. But in Affinity Designer, you can make these edits to vector graphics. So for example, I'm going to grab the HSL adjustment and I can select the color range that I'd like to change. For this example, I'll use red and I'll change this color like this. And you can see I'm changing the color of the entire image. Now, if I close out of this, I can toggle the preview of this off and on. As you can see, this is a non-destructive edit. It's just a filter that gets applied over everything else. And let's say I only wanted this filter to be applied to my subject here. What I could do is I could take the adjustment layer and click and drag it on top of the other layer. And you could see now it's only applied to that layer like that. And if at any point I want to go back and edit that adjustment, I can click on it and change it as needed. Another really handy feature in Affinity Designer is the transparency tool, which might be my favorite tool personally. This allows you to create transparent gradients on objects, groupings of objects, and images with ease. Now in Illustrator, this is normally a whole convoluted process where you have to create a rectangle and then apply a black to white gradient and then apply it over the object as a layer mask. 
In Affinity Designer, this is so much easier though because of the transparency tool. So if I were to click on this grouping of vector objects right here, I can hold a click over the gradient tool and then come down here to the transparency tool. And with this object selected, I can just click and drag like this and you can see I'm able to create a transparent gradient with ease. And if I come up here to the tool settings menu, I can change the type of gradient it is. So right now it's linear by default, but I can change this into elliptical, radial, or conical with ease. So if I were to choose elliptical, you can see we get that result there. And if you want to flip the gradient, you can do so over here by selecting this option to reverse the way the gradient works. Now, one thing to keep in mind to apply this to images, there have to, you have to employ a little bit of a workaround. So I'm going to grab my image right here. And if I press the Y key on my keyboard, I can grab the transparency tool as a shortcut. You'll notice that the transparency tool is not working on this image. But if I create a group out of this image, it'll work. So with the image selected, I will come up here to layer and select group. And now that I made that image into a group, I can grab my transparency tool and now I can create partial transparency on that image with ease. Affinity Designer also has tons of other useful features that you won't find in Illustrator, like isometric tools for generating isometric grids and placing objects on an isometric plane, the offset tool, which allows you to create offsets with an on canvas handle instead of having to use Illustrator's messy numbers based input menu, and quick effects, which are handy shortcuts for creating things like drop shadows and Gaussian blurs. If you want to learn more about these features and how to use them, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over every tool and feature in Affinity Designer and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me whenever you need it. And enrollment is only a one-time fee of $17. There's no monthly or yearly membership fees. You just pay once and you get lifetime access. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you want to check that out. And as always, thanks for watching.